Okay, welcome back everyone to our next segment here at Silicon Angle hosted Druva live event here in Palo Alto. Our next segment hosting uh, Matt Morgan and David Cordell for the Understand the Customer Journey. Matt, the CMO of Druva and David Cordell, customer. Matt, welcome back, good to see you again. It's great to see you, John. So take us through the customer journey. Okay, if you were to think about data protection using legacy terms, you really think mostly about backup. And you think about the, the idea that if I just make a copy of the data and keep it in some storage apparatus, I've kind of protected my data. When you move to data management as a service, you turn that whole thing on its ear. First, let's talk about data protection. You can protect all of your endpoints. I don't care if the endpoints are on the LAN or they're deep in the field connected up to the cloud through a Wi-Fi connection. You can protect all of them. By collecting that data and protecting it, you can ensure that no matter what happens, people can get access to that information. Second, your servers. In remote offices, where there's VMware proliferation, if you will. Often, most organizations don't even go through the hassle of trying to protect those servers. They just give up and they go unprotected. With data management as a service, you can wrap data, Druva's solution inside those servers and back those up directly to the cloud. That data will coexist with the endpoints. And also, importantly, the move to cloud apps. People move to Office 365, they move to G Suite, they move to Salesforce, they got box folders. They think that data is protected. And what they find is over time when data is lost, it's gone. And Druva can back that up as well, bringing all that together. So our customer journey starts with protection. But what happens after protection is where it gets really interesting. Because that data is together and it's inside the cloud, you actually can govern that data. So now legal teams can have access to all of that data if needed. You have the opportunity to manage it from a governance perspective. You have the opportunity to ensure that you're in compliance on that data. And with GDPR, that's becoming such a big deal. I mean, and as the service piece, though, is adopting, Talk about how that is accelerating and where this connects. Oh, absolutely, the as a service is what makes the whole thing magical. If you think about how people can protect their data when all they have to think about is connecting to Druva, you can protect all of that data, right? You don't have to think about, well, I need to build yet another architecture on-prem, I got to go buy yet another appliance, oh wait, that appliance is full, I got to buy another one, oh wait, the hard drives are over three years old, I got to refresh the, all of that goes away. Now, as a service, they just connect. I'm connected, I'm done. Three years, do I have to refresh? No, I don't have to do anything, it's, it's all right there. And the third part though, when you start looking at the customer journey is where it gets super, super interesting. We've been able to wrap machine learning around this data. And by having it all this one data set and having machine learning algorithms, you can evolve customers to data intelligence. David, do you see cloud as the center of your data protection strategy or as an extension of your data protection strategy? Well, we see Druva as the center of our data protection and management strategy. The cloud offers, uh, even though there's consolidation, there's still uh, pitfalls and a lot of management that you have to deal with. Druva was able to simplify this and give us an easy solution. What's the key to their success, in your opinion? The key to their success, in my opinion, is that, well, the ease of use, uh, the ease of implementation, the security that's wrapped behind it in the back end that, that a lot of people just don't see. Um, and setting it up, it literally is just minutes. You know, if I'm with professional services, within 30 minutes you're set up and you're ready to roll. Uh, it's taken the pressure off of our legacy systems. Now we have set up new environments, but the legacy data is still a problem for us and they've been able to determine what is good data and what's not. Drew has been able to help us determine um, based on governance and the intelligence that's being provided. Great, Matt, I mean, they're using Drew as a center of their data protection strategy the cloud versus an extension, as some people may look at it. Why, why is this pattern relevant? Is it a pattern and what does it mean? Because this journey is one that a lot of people are on right now because with the cloud, there's no walls. It means no perimeter. Um, it's a completely different paradigm shift in how you think about IT from an architectural standpoint. It's not the same data protection game as it used to be. You guys have this as a service. So what does it mean to be as the center of the data protection strategy? And is this pattern consistent with what you're seeing? So we've got 4,000 customers on the platform now. And David's story is a story I hear all the time. The idea that I can simply protect my data through a simple connection to the cloud, bam, that's it nothing else to do, I get a single pane of glass, I can access that data, if something goes wrong, I can pull that data down. That is a complete game change if you think about how people used to have to architect a system to be able to protect their data. You think about buying the equipment, wiring up the network, getting the appliance hot, getting access to the appliance, 
is my, are my endpoints and my server and my cloud apps, are they able to communicate? I mean, all of these things that used to be kind of the big aha, they all go away with Druva. You just simply connect to the service and off you go, right? So the conversation that you've had um, about the simplicity angle is kind of the, the gateway drug to why you get started but the limitations to it aren't there, right? So people start saying, wow, if it's that easy, I could do more than just the endpoints. I can start doing my servers. I can do more than just three or four of my servers. Why don't I just do all my servers, right? I mean, this is the conversation that I'm hearing. Maybe you can comment some more on that. Well, there's a lot more to it, I think, than, than just that, but that's dead on. Uh, what we were seeing is, is resources. So when you talk about whether it's hardware or software resources, it's also employee resources. Right. Getting those all lined up is very difficult. So to, to if we were looking at a product in-house, so if we're going to bring on-prem, it would probably take about four to six months to be able to roll it out, because you have to plan. It's like you said, the architect that sits behind it. Like an using an appliance or something. An appliance, right? yeah. That's all that work's got to be vetted, all yep. that stuff is that kind of, <laughs> that's, Absolutely. that's a problem. You know, we're also facing you know, federal regulations. We mm -hmm. have Homeland Security and the Coast Guard, Coast Guard you know, comes yeah. down to us and say, okay, these are the regulations that you're going to need to follow. Well, do these applications or do these appliances meet those standards. In some cases, no. In yeah. other cases, kind of, sort of. Well, we found with Druva that, that you yeah. know, if you look at HIPAA, SOC 2, uh, FedRAMP Ready, these are things that are really important to us, especially our CISO team. Yeah, the cloud's key. I got to ask about the security. You mentioned Coast Guard. First thing goes off in my head is, you know, they want security because you've got a lot of stuff going in and out of the port of New Orleans. You know, I want to make sure that there's no hacking going on. What's the security angle look like on this? Oh, What's security. your thoughts on that? So the security is really good. The, the we do face a lot of attacks. Uh, stuff it comes in from all angles. Um, like I said, with, with a lot of the back end, it's the at the sub. What is it? The uh, sub layer. Um, that to me is really important. So you have your your normal encryption, which everyone tell you, all right, we know we're going to do from point A to point B. You're encrypted. Now, when I start asking questions about back end encryption, encryption, most companies cannot answer. Well, we need to find another engineer. Well. We're not sure we'll get back to you. So with Drew, I was able to get on the phone and start asking the questions, right? How do your subsystems communicate? How is the encryption done on it? What type of encryption is done They had tech jobs, they had security jobs. Yeah. So people have a black hole, well, I'll get back to you. Yeah. Which means they don't have much. Exactly, and so with Druva, you know, it was, you know, there were several conversations, but they were usually real short, 10 minute conversations, right? You know, can you answer this for me? So as I come up, it was easy to reach back out to Drew and say, okay, what about this? And I immediately got an answer back. I didn't have to wait for anyone else didn't have to wait for a call back. So it was really convenient for me and my CISO team. Matt, what's the impact to the marketplace? Because I mean, basically, a lot of the stuff that's emerging, ransomware is a huge issue. Um, uh, you got obviously security from the participants moving in and out of the cloud, um, whether they're customers and or you know, attackers. It's got to work. So you have to deal with a lot of this stuff. How do you guys make that work? And then you got to have the comfort to the customers saying, operationally, you're going to be solid. Well, I think that the cloud providers have done us a wonderful service, right? They have been out evangelizing the move to the cloud. Druva doesn't have to have that conversation anymore. It's now part of the lifeblood of any IT organization. The cloud is reality. So now we're able to come in and say, how can you maximize that investment, right? So take ransomware for a moment. I'm, re I'm really glad you brought that up. Um, this year, there were two massive ransomware attacks. We've seen 600% increase in ransomware attacks overall this year. And we did an incredible survey that showed an enormous amount of penetration within within the Fortune 500. People are losing their data. In this last attack, what was really scary, you didn't have the option to pay the Bitcoin. Or if you did pay the Bitcoin, they didn't bother you to send you the key to get your data back. So it was more like a wipeware attack, not a ransomware attack. I think ransomware attacks are underestimated. People don't understand how severe this is because not only are you down and you are right. hijacked, if you will, or for the ransom for the, for, the, for the security, look at the impact of the business. I mean, HBO is a real public example recently. Right. I mean, this is a real threat to the business model of these companies. It's not like a, a checkbox on security anymore. It, not only you have to check the box, but you've got to really have a bulletproof strategy. Yeah, it's not a nice to have, right? It used to think that maybe ransomware would, would attack a, a dummy that would click on a link in an email. Well, reality is, is everyone's going to make a mistake. And no matter what perimeter security you have, somebody is not, don't call them a dummy, someone's going to accidentally click on something and bam, the ransomware is in your firewall. So with Druva, you don't have to worry about it. 
your data will be protected. It's not just going to be protected. It's going to be protected in the cloud, which is a separate area. There's no way the ransomware is going to crawl to the cloud to encrypt that data. And with our machine learning tech, we're going to see the first encryption, so we're going to alert you so you have early detection. We call it anomaly detection, giving you the opportunity to make sure you can recover all that data. If a, if a friend asked you, hey, what's the journey like with Druven? How do you expect it to go forward? How would you describe that journey? Oh, easy. Uh, simplicity. Um, moving to Druva was, was, it was an easy decision. So if someone was coming to me and asked me, you know, they wanted to find out what about Druva products, it's easy. Get in touch with them. Um, come up with your list of questions and start drilling them. I was pr actually pretty rough in one of the meetings with Druva. <laughs> I wish I could have been a fan. <laughs> uh, what did you do? Did you grill them on the technical? Was it more of, you know, I mean, what was the key drill down points for you? you for me, it's, it's technical. So there was a couple of aspects. You know, we did see a couple of ransomware. Um, it took us a while to recover, so that was a driving factor, but most of when I was drilling um, Druva, it was, it was all technical. Uh, like I said, though, they were firing back the answers as fast as I was firing the questions. So just be prepared. Um, the one thing that, uh, as you touched on with the ransomware, the other nice thing about it is that you can step back through your recovery points and see, okay, this is exactly what happened. So there is the, the analytic piece of it and the machine learning that is Absolutely sweet. It's a lot of times the I forensics actually- Forensics are critical. Yes, so I get the alert, and so when I get things, you know, I'm, I'm a technical CTO. Yeah. I'm gonna go and start looking at things, so it's really convenient for me to start going back and stepping through, okay, now I see it. So besides all the alerts and what you're telling me, I now see this exact same thing. Yeah. So it's easy to act on. And going forward, how do you see that journey progressing? What are the things that you anticipate that you'll be dealing with as CTO, technical CTO? What are the things that are on the horizon for you that you're going to you're looking down the barrel of? Is it more ransomware? Is it more expansion? What's the strategy look like? Uh, we're we're seeing the strangest attacks forever. Uh, so right now there's there's shipping. Shipping is getting attacked left and right. It's been going on for several months. Um, we actually brought a. a company in that provides networking and solutions for ships themselves, for the liners. So they show us the computer system that's on a ship, so I started asking them again about security and draw blanks. Yeah. So in working with actually the Maritime Port Security and Information Sharing Organization out of the Gulf of Mexico, um, it's, it's a lot of awareness. Yeah. Um, a lot of it is education, not only for end users, but for IT. So to be able to start stepping back through the, the, the backups is top notch. Huge story, I'd love yeah. to drill down on that. I'm sure the infrastructure and the evolution, they got to modernize their fleets, technically speaking. They, they do, and a lot of them are looking to the United States that are coming from overseas yeah. to, as a, a driver. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so what we're seeing again is, is through ships. Uh, we are seeing some ransomware come across. Um, there's, I guess, what was it, in Russia they had a rail attack. Well, recently, the Port of New Orleans has acquired public belt of New Orleans. So that will fall under our jurisdiction soon as well. So it's like, all right, what kind of attacks are we going to be seeing from this? So a lot of it is the switching system. Um, but the majority, I know the Coast Guard, a recent uh, activity that we had was all on fishing. So a lot of it today is, is through fishing, but we're going to start seeing more I IoT. Uh, we've seen a couple good cell phone attacks, but back to the IoT, there was, Attacks that, that they weren't organized. They weren't professionals running the attacks. They're coming, and it's going to be rough when they hit. So look at any service here. That's the whole point of cloud, Matt, for the customer journey. Having that center strategy gives you a lot of flexibility. Yeah, I, I think the idea of leveraging all the security that has now been hardened into public cloud providers, Azure and AWS, you, you can inherit all of that as part of the solution. And then all the work that we've done to layer on top of that gives you further assurances. But there's nothing like just having your data replicated entirely off-site in the cloud. And when we talk about replication, we actually do that several times over. So you're in a situation yeah. where you have redundancy, and I think that that's of value as well. Good to have technical chops. Customer journeys have to be simple. That's kind of a basic concept, but tried and true business model, making things simple and elegant. Congratulations, thanks for spending the time sharing the story, Dave, appreciate it. Be right back, more special coverage here at theCUBE. Thanks for watching. <laughs>